Because there's an objective truth. It's not you and I who force Benedict XVI to take account of the Tridentine Mass. It's the Mass itself. There's a truth there, which there isn't in the new Mass. The, the old Mass represents, re makes present again, objectively, truly, and really, the sacrifice of Calvary. Uh, the new Mass may still do it, but it's not nearly so clear, it's not, and, and it becomes more and more often invalid. The new mass is, uh, it, it's, it's a slide, it's a slide away from the truth. You step onto it, you may step onto it high up, but you're very likely to slide. It's a built-in downward slide towards loss of the faith, closing of the churches, closing of the seminaries, you name it. There, but he's, why has Benedict XVI been obliged to, and why will his successor be obliged to take further steps back? There is a truth. But while, and you've, you've all of you seen the opposition that Benedict XVI has had from the bishops, the bishops of France, the bishops of Germany, also the bishops of Great Britain, the opposition he's had to bringing back that old mass or uh, giving giving any time of day to the old mass, as he most certainly did. Uh, he's had strong opposition. The, the devil's system, and which has succeeded in, in hobnobbling the church, in crippling the church, the devil's system does want, the system of lies does not want to have back the mass of truth. There's a, a, a titanic war between lies and truth. Never, as in modern times, have the lies come so close to total power and total control and total domination. The, they, the, they are capable of organizing an event in New York and Washington which smashes two enormous buildings and puts a serious dent in a third of the Pentagon down in one They are all capable of organizing a huge event, a sensational event like that, they are capable of, of spinning, spinning the event in the media, of covering up the truth, of covering up the conspiracy, and putting out the official lie in such a way that practically everybody, not everybody, but practically everybody all over the world believes we are liable to be the victims of dangerous and terrible terrorists. So we need a police state. Police say, please come and save us. You are our savior. Police, please. This they, are, they succeed in doing all over the world. When I go through an airport, which happens quite often, and I go through, I, I have to queue up to go through some machines. Often I have to take off my shoes, take off my jacket, take off my shoes. Then I walk through this machine and so on. So, so, so. I'm astonished how docile people are. And I say to myself, people are wanting the police state. At least the police state say I to myself, people, you know, it's almost their religion. Dare I say, it's almost their religion. They go through, at least in this world, somebody takes me seriously. At least somebody wants me to take my shoes off and put them on again. It's almost as good as being in a mosque. Think of that. That's another place where you have to take your shoes off. So this is, the, the x-ray machine is holy ground. And we are all of us taking part in a right of religion, the right of the globalist religion for our protection and safety. Poor modern man. Brilliant machines. But how dumb he is in practically everything else except machines. Well, the Pharisees came to Jesus and one of the doctors of the law asked him, tending him, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and with thy whole soul and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. This is number one. Here is number one. God. The true God. And he is real. He is the foundation of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth with God 
is not the correspondence of the mind to the thing. Truth with God is the correspondence of the thing to the mind because every single object, every single creature conforms to, as a creature, conforms to the idea that God first had of it. There's firstly God's mind, then there's reality, and then there's the human mind. And the human mind is true if it recognizes the reality. God's mind is true because it creates the reality. There is number one. This is the greatest of the first commandment. And the second is like to this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In 1984, again, Orwell understood this. 1984 said, uh, 1944 is the quotation of O'Brien, we are creating a civilization of hate, says O'Brien. Ours will be a civilization of hate. And we think of poor Pope John Paul II creating with his new church and his new faith and his new mass supposedly a civilization of love. And so many poor deluded human beings today who think that what we have is a civilization of love. Uh-uh. The second is like this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Man is, comes number two. Man is number two. God is number one. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. And the Pharisees being gathered together, Jesus asked them. Now Jesus counterattacks. And he takes a quotation from a psalm. The Lord said unto my Lord. It's in the, one of the psalms of David. So David, is the, David says, the Lord, God, said to my Lord, David's Lord, who, whose son do you think he is? The, whose son is the Christ, the Messiah? And of course they, they, they immediately say, he's David, David's son. Because uh, the, the, the Messiah would be of the tribe of Judah and of the uh, a descendant of David. Then Jesus said to them, then how is it possible, my good friends, to call, how can David call, call the Messiah Lord, the, the Lord said to my Lord, if David is the, if the Messiah is the son of David, he's beneath David like son is beneath father, then how can David call him his Lord above him? The Lord God said to my Lord, how can the Messiah be both the Lord of David and his son? The answer, of course, which the Pharisees would not allow, admit, is that Jesus Christ would be God and as God Lord of David, and human being, and as human being, he is son of David. So he is both Lord and son, if you admit that God became man and that Jesus Christ was the both God, true God and true man. And that's the solution to our Lord's question. The Pharisees, they're not dumb, immediately sense where our Lord is going and they don't want to go there. They do not want to recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, still less that he is God. And so, silence. The Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make thy en enemies thy footstool. If, if David then calls the Messiah Lord, how can the Messiah be the son of David? No man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Our Lord would si uh, silence them with truth that they don't want to recognize. The great mistake of George Orwell's 1984, what there is of that of which there is no suggestion in his book, is that the truth will ultimately dominate even the most terrible ter globalism or totalitarianism or whatever. There is a truth. And I said there two nights ago, Solzhenitsyn, the great Russian Orthodox Christian, Solzhenitsyn, the great writer, uh, recognized this. And he said, the whole revolution could, have been, could be stopped by one little old lady who said in the hands of her torturers, you can do with me what you like, I'm not going to tell you. She had harbored a, a, an orthodox priest and she wasn't going to, they wanted to know where he was or where he'd been and she wasn't going to tell them and she said to them, you can do what you like to me. But, and why, how did she manage, how could she?